Is it fractions or is it factoring? What is your bigger nemesis? What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is give you a very helpful tip that's going to help you complete the square. One of the reasons why completing the square gets difficult for students is because sometimes we do the process differently depending on what we're looking for. So really this kind of tip stems from why are we doing completing the square? What are we trying to achieve? So you can see in this equation, I have two different equations, right? This equation is set equal to Y and this equation is going to be set equal to zero. Now, two of the more common ways we first learn to complete the square is to one, define find the vertex of a parabola and two, to be able to find the zeros of an equation. Now we can definitely use the exact same process to complete the square. But what I want to do in this video is offer you two different ways to do it because I feel that one way is much easier than the other way based on what equation you have and what you're looking for. And you can see in these examples, we definitely have something that is an issue. We have a coefficient of two. And if you remember the standard algorithm for completing the square, we cannot complete the square when we have a coefficient in front of our X squared. So we need to get rid of it. Now, what we need to do is go ahead and decide how are we going to do it? And that's where these two different methods are going to differentiate. So in this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this identifying the vertex, right? So when we give an equation like y equals, typically a lot of times we want to complete the square so we can write it in vertex form. So therefore we can identify the vertex and graph the equation. Usually when we have an equation set equal to zero, we're going to have, we're going to be looking for the zeros, meaning we want to find the values of x that are going to satisfy this equation. So how are we going to approach completing the square differently? Well, when we have an equation in vertex form, you can see it's already set equal to y. What I prefer to do in a problem like this this is to keep everything on the right hand side. I do not want to do anything on the left hand side. I'm always going to keep this equation equal to y. So what that means is if I want to get rid of the two, I got to think, how can I get rid of the two, but still leave it on the right hand side? And the answer to that is going to be factoring. Now I can factor a two out of a four, but I cannot factor the two out of the three. Now, whenever I'm factoring, all I simply need to do though, is factor it only out of my quadratic and my linear term. I don't need to worry about factoring it out of this three. So therefore I can rewrite this equation as a two times a X squared minus a two X plus three. Now you can see our expression that's inside the parentheses where we're going to complete the square. Now I can go ahead and follow how we complete the square, right? If you remember, that's going to be your B divided by two quantity squared. So in this case, that's going to be a negative two divided by two quantity squared, negative two divided by two is a negative one, negative one squared is going to be a positive one. Now what I'm going to do is add that term inside the parentheses, right? I am now completing the square. I am creating a perfect square trinomial. So that's going to give me a Y equals a two times X squared minus a two X plus one plus three. Now it's really important to understand on this equation, I added a one on the right hand side, right? Now again, remember this equation was balanced, right? Y was equal to this expression. So if I'm going to add any number on the right hand side, I also have to subtract it on the right hand side, but it's really important to recognize here. I didn't really add this number one via the distributive property. This one is being multiplied by two. So when I subtract a one, I also have to multiply this by a two. Now I can go ahead and factor down my perfect square trinomial, which is going to be an X minus one quantity squared. And I get a Y equals a two times X minus one quantity squared. And then three minus two is going to be a plus one. So now in this case, you can identify here, my vertex is going to be a one comma negative one. And you could definitely go ahead and graph from here. Now, the problem with this example was the factoring. And a lot of students have trouble factoring out the two. That's where they get stuck. That's why this next method is actually preferred because we're not going to deal with factoring. In this case, we're actually just trying to solve for X. So to avoid doing factoring, what I can do is divide by two. But before I divide by two, what I want to do is actually isolate my X squared and my X. Because if you look on this left-hand side, what did I do? I only factored out the two from the two X squared and the negative four X, right? That's the exact same thing we're going to do over here. I only want to complete the square with those two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the three over to the other side. Now I'm going to be left with a two X squared minus a four X equals a negative three. Now to get rid of the two, I could factor out the two, but I think you'd agree it's probably easier to divide by a two on both sides to get rid of it. And when I do that, I'm now going to get a X squared minus a two X equals a negative three halves. Now the problem here, as you can probably guess, is we're going to have fractions. So you kind of really have a debate. Is it fractions or is it factoring? What is your bigger nemesis? But now I've isolated the X squared minus two X on the left-hand side. So now I can go ahead and complete the square. And again, it's going to be the exact same thing, right? B divided by two quantity squared. So therefore I'll have an X squared minus a two X plus one equals a negative three halves plus one, right? Because whatever I do on the left-hand side, I need to do on the right-hand side. But the nice thing about this is I don't need to multiply by two, right? Because that two was gone. I didn't factor it out in this case. So therefore you can see here, I just can go ahead and add a one to both sides. The other thing that's important to understand is I'm adding a one on both sides, right? Whereas this one I'm adding and subtracting on the same side. So students will get confused. Like if they learn completing the square one way, then when they want to do it the other way, they still want to like add and subtract on different sides or something crazy like that. So just make sure you understand you're either adding on both sides or you're adding and subtracting on the same side. You have to produce your equivalent equation. So let's go ahead and factor this down. So that's going to be an X minus one quantity squared equals. Now, again, here you can go ahead and rewrite 
write this as fractions, right? So I can do negative three halves plus a two over two, right? Because two over two is the same thing as one. Now you can see that's going to be a negative one half. Okay, now if we wanted to go ahead and solve from here, what would we need to do? We need to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And hopefully you'd recognize here, we can't take the square root of a negative one half, right? We could find the imaginary solutions if we really wanted to, but hopefully you recognize here that these are gonna have no real solutions, meaning this graph is not gonna cross the x-axis. And again, that should make some sense, right? Because if I was to go ahead and graph this with my like my vertex here, I have a vertex at one comma negative one. That doesn't make any sense. And that is true. That doesn't make any sense because the solution here is actually going to be a positive one. So therefore this will be a one common positive one. So that will go from right here. And then again, this is an A, so therefore it's going to be positive A. So therefore the graph is gonna be opening up. So therefore again, it makes sense. So what if you need to rewrite this in vertex form? Could you go ahead and do it? And yeah, of course you could. You don't wanna add a one half to both sides. What you wanna do is use your inverse operation. So if I multiply by two on both sides, I'd get a two times the X minus one quantity squared equals a negative one. Then I can go and add a one to both sides and I get a two times X minus one quantity squared plus one is equal to zero, which again, I could just re place the zero with a Y and you can see it's going to be exactly the same thing that I had over here. So hopefully this tip to be able to either factor out your two or divide out your two based on if you're trying to find the vertex or if you're trying to find the zeros was helpful for you. If you want more examples, resources, or notes on completing the square, then go ahead and check out the playlist and information I have for you down below. Cheers.